Ross Chastain used the wall all the way around this racetrack. Logano has been the class of the field. Check out the big brain on Brad. Yeah, I need to change my underwear. What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast. Your fantasy, uh, your net, uh, old habits die hard, your NASCAR betting and DFS home. That is Brian Twining. I am Kyle Robert. Uh, forgive me because I am still fighting off the uh, sickness that held us out last week. Hopefully you did see our betting card, or maybe it's better if you didn't when we uh, go to recap it. We'll see what that looks like. But um, Chicago's in the books. Uh, Brian and I will will rant and rave about that just a little bit. Uh, obviously, uh, holding a ticket of a uh, aforementioned Christopher Bell. Um, all that stuff, and then we'll get into Atlanta. We got some picks, we got some thoughts, we got some uh, opinions on how to maybe approach it, uh, where there may be value. Brian, I think of all the things we've been doing, especially of late, I think getting ahead of market on some of the drivers, especially on as we talked today, has been one of our strong suits. Uh, we had yeah. obviously had Hamlin at a big number dropped way down. We had Truex at Sonoma and a big number dropped way down. We also had Bell last week. He His number uh, dropped. And then I forget the in-between race. I feel like we had somebody at a decent number. Well, you were you were really high on Chastain. Oh, I was high on Chastain, and I and, talked about him all week, and I never actually uh-huh. put him on the card because I don't like winning money, so that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think the best thing we can be doing right now is saying, where is the value? Where is something mispriced? Let's grab some of it now, and then let's come back to it later. Um, yeah, I definitely think that has been our strong suit over the last few races. Like you said, the Denny Hamlin number last week I felt was completely egregious. Getting him yeah. 35 to 1 before qualifying when he put it on pole at Sonoma, which he wound up doing again. Yeah, and uh, 20 to 1? 20 to 1, baby. We cashed that 20 to 1 pole ticket. Uh oh, God. Without going too much into the Chicago street race, um, like I still felt it was a good bet betting Hamlin too at that number had they not began in the wet on the rain tires or on the wet tires, sorry, wet weather tires. When Hamlin literally had tweeted before they started, please don't do this, which was a writing on the wall that there was something bad going to happen. But no, yeah. The one thing I will say coming into Atlanta is – We've seen this so many times before at super speedway type races, maybe not so much Atlanta, which we'll get into a little bit as we just discussed the race itself, but qualifying doesn't necessarily mean as much at these types of tracks as, you know, a traditional one and a half. Whereas like Atlanta, you know, if you qualify well, you're probably going to be able to stay up there because there isn't as much yeah. ability to pass. But Didn't I Skybox NASCAR say like two of the last three winners at Atlanta have started on the pole. Yeah, it's like it. it uh, Logano started on the pole and he won. And then uh, the, it wasn't two of the last three. It's like two of the last four or two of the last five. Okay. Have done that. But yeah, qualifying is pretty paramount here. But with it still being a super speedway type race and it just the second year at the new configuration, like the books are probably, they're not going to move the numbers as much that we would see at a traditional one and a half. So, I mean, it'll be difficult to find the values that we've had the last couple of weeks, but I do think they're still out there. Yeah. And obviously, you know, we'll we'll jump into all that, but let's talk Chicago. We can start with qualifying because obviously, um, you know, we had a few drivers that we were really hyped on and we bet them at big numbers because we thought there could be value. So yep. we kind of parlayed that into, hey, there's still a ton of value on these guys to qualify really well. Let's see if we can't grab some value. So I believe we we're both on Bell. We we're both on Hamlin. And I forget who was the third guy we bet. So I think we bet Reddick at five. Reddick, and that's and right. He qualified on the front row. So yeah. I mean, so felt felt really good about where our head was at. Um, and then, yeah, Denny was not a fan of starting in the wet. I I was a little concerned that things were going to be wonky at the start, even though, you know, and we could talk about the rest of the race because there is some crap at the beginning. There's some garbage at the end, but there's a whole middle section where the race, the race was really fun. There was a lot of cool stuff happening. It was really exciting to see. Um, Noah Gragson spent more time getting his team <laughs> and his 
his i mean his sponsors got to be so happy yes oh, he's not sure. going to win the race but that dude was constantly parked with the camera right on that Wendy's logo. Yeah. Um, I wanted a Baconator so bad. I might have to pick one up this week. Um, so Noah, good job. But there was a lot of fun moments dis- despite our frustrations at the beginning and at the end. Yeah, I mean, I got to say from a from a pure like fan perspective, even removing like my bets, I, I think this was maybe the second or third most enjoyable race I've seen all season just because of, you know, we had never seen anything like this. I feel like the racing was actually really good when we kind of came in here. We had no expectations. It was either we thought it was going to be on one end of the spectrum or the other. It was either going to be follow the leader or complete shit show. And we got a little bit of both. But, you know, we had good battles at the front. The to take a little bit from F1, like if, if people are going to complain about that, like the racing in the middle of the field was fantastic. I mean, anywhere from spots five through 10 to, you know, 15 to 20, like these guys were getting up on each other, squeezing each other into the corners. I mean, you had people spinning out. And then, of course, it, it sucks to have this happen. But we had the ultimate Austin Powers moment where cars literally could not get out of, they could not pass, and cars had to do like the backup and constantly K-turn in order to get through With yeah. when Harvick and LaJoy got into it, coming out of turn seven, I believe it was. So yep. the, overall, it was a fantastic race. I thoroughly enjoyed it. But transitioning back to the betting side, like you said, it, I felt great going into the day, knowing I was was not very exposed, and the numbers I had were really nice. No. But when we got to that point when they started talking about darkness, and then when they said we're cutting it to 75, when they actually put a limit on the laps, I was pissed. I just you can't make that call at that point. That that's my biggest gripe. You want to make that call, you want to say, "Hey guys, we're going to be shortening this." Even if it's a, "Hey everybody, we're we're going to shorten the race. We're trying to figure out exactly what it's going to be. If you all want to pit now, go for it." Exactly. So that way it's not like the I understand that they're like at Sonoma for sure. Like there was a strategy call You know, the guys that wanted to stay out had an opportunity. Chase took that risk, obviously got to the front, but was not able to hang there. Truex went right around and was fine. To do it with that many laps to go, for Chris Bell to be basically dominating the whole time and to be completely taken out of the race was complete nonsense. And, you know, I understand, like, okay, there's a thought here and there's a plan, but it seemed like they just, like, arbitrarily threw shit against the wall and it's stuck at that point. And it's like, no, call it before stage two so they know at the stage break what's happening for stage three, how many laps they have to run. They can make a decision. And then what it did is it forced Bell and it forced Reddick and it forced these guys that had been amazing all day to be stuck in the mud with these crappy drivers. And so they're forcing it around. They're trying to get around Eric Jones and they're trying to get around these guys to get to where they need to be. Yeah, and that's what ruined the race, in my opinion, for for a guy like Tyler Reddick, for instance, who he had been up front all day. And yes, he was able to kind of get back up there near the top five, but because he was having to race so hard, amongst the you know mediocre guys on this track i feel like he burned his tires out or he was driving a little bit too hard which had him going into the tire wall yep. um you know making it, decisions he hadn't made all day they've been exactly they, had, exactly. they hadn't been doing that for two stages and all of a sudden they're forcing things and they're the nbc crew was oh my god look how smart these guys are they didn't do shit exactly they, they got luck boxed into it. And of course, who they, was the biggest benefactor of Lux Box City? I thought, oh, here's Chase Elliott's win. They're going to gift him a win. Yep. I was so Forced worried that Elliott playoff. was going to get in there. I mean, and then, you know, the thing for me was that if they would have said, okay, we're going to shorten the race to 75 laps, but at lap 50, we're going to have a non competitive yeah, uh, pit stop. Caution. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like that would have been fairer than what they did by the you had the guys already i mean everybody had the data everybody had the weather channel shit where they're predicting oh you know we only have so much time of light maybe we should pit now jump ahead of the field but 
that that to me would have been okay had the race just gone until NASCAR said, okay, you got uh, you know ten laps to go or something. Yeah, or Not, throw a competition caution say instead of seventy five, say you have seventy laps, and you come out, you run the twenty, and you and you see who the because the the ultimate like honestly like if my car doesn't win, I'm fine with that. But I want them to have the chance. I don't want like I, I don't I want the best cars to be in the front like they had been all day and to have a chance to win the race. Now if I mean if I Reddick does say, something stupid or Chris Bell runs a bad line and gets passed by SV, SVG, yeah. which very well could have happened, that's fine. But I, I wanted to but see to that force him to the back and not even give him a chance to do that is is just nonsense. That's what I yeah, like I mean I will say I feel like SVG or Shane Van Gisbergen he was probably a top three driver I mean, he was there all day. I mean, he was yeah, so I basically mean, almost got the pole. He was running really well. Uh, I was really impressed because, and I'm wondering the, the one thing I did notice and the thing they talked about on the broadcast is when some of these newer guys come over, they they're fine for a while. They run this, but then they don't realize how hard some of the NASCAR guys push on restarts and, and uh, yeah. at different points in the race. And he, you could see him falling back a little bit. And all of a sudden, when the shuffle happened, he got mixed in with the guys that just simply weren't as fast as him. And he was yeah. able to go right around him. So yep. I'm wondering if that, if he was like, if he would have been, like, I still think he would have been in the conversation. Um, but I don't think he would have gotten into the front and sped, sped away the way he did. Which, by the way, for a guy to be thrown in a car, oh, wait, and you're going to sit on the other side and you're going to exactly. shift with the other thing. And they and they had the camera on his feet, which was so sweet, um, showing how he's working the clutch when no other drivers are doing that because you don't really have to. Yeah, you don't even it, have to use the clutch was, at all. It was very cool. So I, yeah. I'm yeah, i so happy it wasn't a Justin Haley win. Nothing against Justin Haley or average ass Chase Elliott or any of these other jabronis. <laughs> Uh, you know, the one of the guys that was dominant in practice, dominant in qualifying, yep. and was in the conversation for a majority of the race, was able to take the checkered flag. First time, uh, first winner in a in a first race since nineteen like sixty one. It was yeah. incredible. I will add one more thing to that race that I hope they do next season because it sounds like we're gonna get another race and. I, I would not mind because I think Chicago deserves a do over because the race was incredible. The weather sucked. Hopefully, the people we showed up. The, the everybody was watching the race, which is really cool. You know, we'll see if it becomes a thing that they do every year. But um, hey, yeah, I'm I mean, still hoping for that springtime Vegas street race. I would, you know, if 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 F1 goes off without a hitch, um, maybe that's something we can expect. Yeah, but so, so the one thing I want them to change is sure. I have zero understanding why they maintain the single file restarts the entirety of the race, even clear after everyone had transitioned to slicks. I think I think it was a weather thing and they just Oh they, yeah, weather when they're they all on slicks already. Right, but that's it's the right you don't want to force them into making a dumb decision. But and that's I, racing. I also, but I also think that you know if you, the if you if you have two but too wide, you have more accidents, you force more restarts, you go to more overtime rounds. They need so to make what? sure they need to make sure the race was done early. Like, did they handle it well? No. But, I mean, at least that, to me, that part makes sense. Honestly, they should have just waited until Monday to run the race in perfect conditions. Oh, Everybody was already off. Facts and logic, and that's just stupid. Why would we Why would we do that? Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. I'm convinced the city put pressure on them to get it done with so they could get everything out and get ready for the fourth. But, yeah, that's that that's definitely a possibility. And I think there's definitely still a little bit of bitterness from <laughs> some of our bets, to be honest. You don't say. Yeah. So let's 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 get bitter. Because Christopher Bell, even if he doesn't win at 25 to 1, top 10 feels great. He is oh, he was there. He's a top yeah. five car all day. Denny Hamlin doesn't, you know, obviously. And he almost got there. He got to 11th. He got oh. right there. Couldn't get it in. Uh, Austin Sindrick, I didn't deserve it, but thank you. Exactly. Uh, Walked into that one. Bell over Busher would have been a win. Reddick over Average Ass Elliott would have been a win. Both of those were caches, the in basically the entire race. Mm -hmm. And if Elliott or if Reddick or Bell had done something stupid and, and ended up wrecking and they didn't 
cover or what cash because of that. That's on me. Uh, you know, I, I respect that. But NASCAR just shuffling the field and not giving him a chance. Yeah. Uh, Chris Bell, top Toyota plus 550. That was felt pretty good. Um, Byron, Byron was a little frustrating. I, I really wish that I, I had just done Hamlin. <clears throat> like, I love Bully B. I'm just not sure road courses are a place as an outright. I want to take advantage. <clears throat> I added Suarez at 16 because I felt like he was fast. Um, and I liked the, what track house was doing. I think having SVG in the, in the garage was really good for the whole team. Um, and then the Ty Gibbs top 10, I added that late. Uh, we obviously tweeted him out. I, I shared him on the YouTube page. Um, so, you know, these are all above board. Couldn't record. You can probably hear in my voice that, uh, I am going to struggle through this a little bit, but I wanted to make sure we got a pot out for you guys. And then. Obviously, by the weekend, hopefully, um, we'll be good, and I'll let Brian carry the rest of the way. So, Brian, break down your card, some of your thoughts, and uh, kind of where we are. Yeah, like, I, to me, I feel like this was the safest weekend that I went with so far this season, and which is saying something, considering we've had three super speedway-type races, all where we should not be getting nutso, which we normally do. But, yeah, I felt fantastic with the Hamlin and Bell outrights. I mean, obviously, Hamlin was shuffled out early but bell like kyle's was saying was probably the best car throughout the day when before the whole shuffle thing happened the hamlin top 10 i was i haven't sweat a top 10 bet like this in a really long time because and you shouldn't have our, had to. yeah like i just don't understand he 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 had the speed i i know he got shuffled out early but he was running top 10 again he was another guy he got shuffled down and i'm pretty sure he had a poor pit stop when that all took place so that sucked i added the larson top five the mcdowell outright and the dinger over suarez matchups um sunday morning so i mean obviously i lucked out there and to actually come away with a profitable weekend after losing uh the hamlin and the bell and the hamlin top 10 i i feel fairly good going into atlanta and it'll be interesting to see if my card is even smaller well, and team. I think to your point, like betting the way you did with, you know, smaller units on the outrights, even though they're fun and bigger units on top tens, top fives, matchups, that kind of stuff to kind of balance it out. That way, yeah. if you're head to, if your matchups and you're in finishing positions cash, you're making money. And then obviously if you hit outright, then it's like a lottery ticket. So um, yeah, basically. since good year, we're still profitable. Obviously, it's been a frustrating couple of weeks for your boy. Um, you were able to scrape a little bit better by, but overall, not too bad. And then on the season, it's been a real roller coaster. There's been weeks where we're up 20 units and other weeks where we're down 20 units. So um, hopefully we're going to get back in the hot seat here. Atlanta is uh, an interesting beast. So let's see if we can find some bets, find some value. More importantly, if we keep getting ahead of market, Brian, we're going to start cashing tickets at a more regular basis. Um, we just got to figure it out. So let's start over on Action Network. We have Caesars, DraftKings, and Rivers. Obviously, we'll get to Barstool um, as well to get some, you know, shop them out, find a better number. If you find better odds than we found, let us know down in the comments. And then, yes, please obviously do. Hit that. Always shop it. Betting NASCAR is not easy, even when you're betting the guy who gets on the pole or betting the guy who dominates the first two stages. Um, <laughs> NASCAR finds a way. Okay. One more thing before we get into this, not to, not to uh, beat a dead horse here, but the fact that our favorite outright, the B O V dot, 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 dot did not open up their live odds after I think it was a caution with like at, at lap 40. I haven't been this irate about like sports betting in, in quite some time because yeah. there was, you, they, they were updating their odds live, but it was a closed market. So you could see the numbers changing, but you could not place a bet. They weren't going to get caught with their pants down. They weren't going to give us an opportunity to bet. Some of the guys were up there. Ugh. And honestly, Brian, they probably saved us because we weren't betting SVG. We were betting all those 50 to one guys hoping for a lottery ticket and none of them won. 
But it would have been like a quarter of a unit. I mean, just to be able to even get in there. And then there was at one point when SVG, I think it was on the last restart, when he was starting behind Justin Haley, you could still grab him at minus 250. Well, you couldn't grab him because their their odds were closed, but they had updated the odds, and he was minus 250. Yeah. And he was by far, you know, oh, 10 yeah. times was, better than Haley at that time. Class. I would have emptied the account on that. Yeah. Um. So let's talk about this week. Uh, apparently, Kyle Bush is 16. That's interesting. So Kyle Bush, Chase Elliott, and Joey Logano lead the field at 10 to 1. You can get Logano as long as 12. His Penske teammate as long as 12. Um, and Hamlin and Kozlowski kind of round out that the guys you that start have a 12. Um, obviously, you can get 14 on Hamlin, 14 on Kez. Obviously, Logano's one here. Penske has been amazing here. Um, do you have any darts at the top of the board you want to throw? I'm wearing the hat right here. Like I, I figured as much. Yeah. Blaney 12 to one. It, we talk about him every time we go to a super speedway. I, you know, I just think that the, these are his tracks, whether, whether he's actually better at one and a half, you know, that's, or different types of tracks. I think that's besides the point. He just knows how, how to race here. I think his yeah. issue is, finishing the deal you know <laughs> where that's like logano is somebody who i i would i think blaney's better than logano at these tracks but logano is better at navigating an avoidance of like the wrecks or the issues you know he he's just a little yeah. bit better at seeing that yeah blaney is just the king of an issue in the third uh third stage and finding a way to ruin his day but you know started in the top six in all three races spring 2022 fall 2022 and then spring 23 um obviously was it spring 23 was the year it was a little bit colder than most yeah Um, yeah it was really cold take it take it with a grain of salt a little bit because i think they'll they'll go through tires but um you know seventh in the spring uh, fifth last fall, and then obviously 17th, the one before that, but a driver rating over 105. He led 15 laps in 2022. Um, so he's, you know, had some issues, but um, has found a way to be in the mix. I think he makes a lot of sense. I think when the Coke win happened, he got a monkey off his back. I think there's a lot less pressure on him. I think he'll be a lot more comfortable going into this race. And he had legitimate speed. He's been awesome at mile and a half. Um, you know, it, it's like mile and a half. And then it's like Michigan, which is sort of like a fast two mile. And then it's Atlanta. And then it's super sp- The rest of the yeah. speedways for me is kind of how I'm, how I'm, you know, ranking them. Um, but yeah, no, he, he makes a hell of a lot of sense at the top of the board. Um, from a history point of view, from a stats, numbers, everything point of view, Chase Elliott should be numbered here, but I don't trust him. I, I, I you know, I'm jokingly calling him average ass Chase Elliott, but like <laughs> he has not been as good as we expect. I think the inconsistency in the car, the injuries, all that stuff, um, you know, even like his last three finishes. He's finished strong, but for the majority of the race, he's been kind of a mid-pack driver. Um, he's obviously the Sonoma. We stayed out, was able to get to the front. Um, you know, at, uh, got the got the benefit at Chicago. I was going to say at Chicago, he didn't yeah. look great either. Um, I think he. I think you know, obviously, he's a guy that things could just click and he could just dominate the field. He's obviously got a win here. This is you know a, more more of a more or less a home game for him. So I don't fault anybody who goes there. I just I, at this point I can't do it. Um, if I'm betting Hendrick, I'm going to go with all the other three drivers first. Yeah, um, and I think too it's something to be said about imagine the Chase Elliott narrative when we're like four races to go and he's still pretty far behind in points. Like how yeah. exciting will that be? For yeah, he's he's got to get a fans win. and non fans. 
I feel like he has to get a win. Um, especially this year where there's been a lot more like double, triple winners, like Pete, the, the, yeah. the elite is separating. So even if he can, you know, quote unquote, sneak in, it's going to be real hard for him to get into the next round if he doesn't get another win. So um, I think he needs a win to be a, a legitimate title contender this year. Um, let's talk about the kind of the next range. I think there's a lot of interesting. Obviously, we have Denny. We have Brad K, who I know recent form has been really good. And I know RFK has found a way. I mean, at Talladega, they put or at Daytona, they pushed to the front. But this feels aggressive, and I know people are betting it, so it's not going to get much longer. Um, but at, even at fourteen, that's 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 a that's a long, hard uh, no for me. Um, and then the Hendrick guys, Byron and Larson. Larson, you get as long as sixteen, um, has not been good at Atlanta. Isn't really a super speedway guy in general. His last three trips. Uh, spring 23 started ninth, finished 31st. Obviously, a lot of issues there. Um, fall 22 qualified third. Oh, here we go, finishes 13th, and then spring <laughs> 22 starts 21st, finishes 30th. So, um, has been bad from a driver rating perspective, has only led one lap over three races. Um, there's some interesting numbers I know that got mentioned on the NASCAR betting preview show with Derek Yoder, which if you're not listening and you're betting NASCAR every week, you're missing out on some, some really good information. Some really, really smart people, uh, are on there each and every week, bringing lots of good information and it's a interactive show. So if you have questions, yep. if you have thoughts, if you need, uh, feedback, it's a great place to go. And Brian and I are there each and every week. Sometimes we're on the show. Sometimes we're just hanging out. Um, so make sure you are adding that to your NASCAR betting calendar. And if you can't make it on Wednesday nights, uh, there is a podcast version or you can list, bet, listen back on Twitter spaces. So, uh, make sure you make that a part of your prep each and every week. Um, so with that being said, I'm fading Larson. Byron is, you know, I, I'm, I'm in love with Byron at the mile and a half. I'm in, I, I think this is a great spot for him. Um, obviously at his Atlanta got the win in 22, um, you know, had the issue in uh, fall race 22 and then spring race, um, but led 41 laps, even finishing 30th. Um, so he's a guy that, you know, is really interesting and he's just having that year this year where it just, everything's clicking. He's been great at mile and a half. This is obviously a faster version. Um, but I think he could be interesting. I guess for you, you know, what are you, are you doing anything with this range? Is there anyone you want to chat about or should we just move on to the next range? Yeah, I like Keselowski finished strong during the spring. But again, like track conditions are going to be completely different. Like we said, Byron has looked fantastic on traditional mile and a half. But obviously this race is differently than that. So I do I do expect Byron to fire off extremely well. So, I mean, when you're looking at like pre-flop value, I think there's definitely some there with him because we could see him, you know, post qual on Sunday night, Sunday morning, coming back at eight to one or seven to one if he puts this thing on the front row, which he's done numerous times already this year. But outside of them, like I would prefer Denny post qualifying just because you know that's kind of his his mo at super speedways. I know Atlanta's different; it's a little bit harder to work through the field, but he normally drops to the back and likes to you know wait till the end to kind of push and get get to the front so i don't know what type of qualifying speed we're going to see with him and then you know early you might actually get a better line live yeah. on him if, if that's even even with hamlin like his his last three qualifying efforts have been like mid-teens 14 15 and 16 so if he qualifies there maybe you get a 15 to 1 or 18 to 1 yeah ex exactly like i i mean he Unless he puts it on pole, which is definitely possible, but you know, I, can we trust him after the last two times he started up there to finish up there? So, yeah, yeah, no, I'm with you. Uh, let's go to the next range where I have my first outright. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna call it the track house turkey, stealing it from I forget who said it on, um, on the on the NASCAR betting preview, but 
I think Ross Chastain has what it takes to win this week. I think he's been really fast of late. I know, you know, he, he got the monkey off his back. Um, he's found that spot where it's just aggressive enough without being stupid aggressive early. This yeah. is a great spot for him. This is a track where, I mean, has just been awesome. Um, you know, 13th in the, in the spring race, we talked about how that was going to be a little different weather wise, uh, but led five laps. Um, and then the two before that was second in both of the spring and fall started second. Like he could qualify. Well, I know normally we're like, eh, he might not qualify that great. I think he, if that car unloads well, and we've seen track house getting their shit together again, <coughs> all of a sudden that car looks a lot faster. He's in the top five. Um, you know, six, if you can get 16 to one now, now it's 10 to one, 12 to one. And obviously I wouldn't fault anybody who wants to actually see it. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fall for the trick twice. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get the the, the football pulled out from under me. Um, I'm not Charlie Brown. He is not Lucy. Um, so I'm going to take that sixteen to one um, and run to the window and and smash that. Yeah, you know I can't fault you there because when you look at his his most recent qualifying efforts, clearly at different tracks, you know removing the two road courses and Chica- or mm-hmm. one road course, one street race. First, eighth, 14th, fifth, third, 14th, all at like traditional mile and a half slash, you know, oval type courses. And then he qualified 23rd at Dega, but at, uh, what was it, Atlanta, he qualified 18th. But the previous year, the first year in the next gen at the at the new c- config, he was inside the top 10 both times. So, I mean, he's he's kind of gotten his groove back. I think he's qualifying better of late. Trackhouse seems to be firing on all cylinders right now. So if you can get that this number, I think he's probably going to qualify inside the top 10 again at this track. And then, you know, that number is gone. You're probably looking at 10 to 1, 12 to 1 post-qual, which, you, you know, then you're you're sad you missed on the extra four four units there. Yeah. No, I am, uh, I am simpatico. Um, this range is really interesting, too. So we can talk about the two Toyotas. But I think you should mention Chris, Chris Busher. <laughs> because if you like RFK, if you like the Fords, who the Fords are going to be really popular. There's a lot of really good options this week. Yeah. Obviously, a lot of good track history. I'd much rather bet Busher at 20, 22 than Brad K at 14. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, Busher is another guy who, obviously, road courses, he's really become a ringer there. But then at Super Speedways, he's always a guy who... He's in contention until he gets, he always gets collected no. in the wrecks. Like when he's not wrecking at supers, he's normally finishing inside or right near the top 10 mark. Um, it was him and Brad K up front. I believe it was at the 500 at Atlanta. They were both up front before he got wrecked. Like, I mean, his last two finishes here at the new Atlanta are 33rd and 35th. So, I mean, that's probably going to pull some people away, maybe, you know, some lesser in tune with actually what's happening better so i i you know i like the number he's qualified 14th or better in all three trips to atlanta seventh this year where ford brought tons of speed so if he puts this inside the top 10 again he's again another guy who's probably dropping around that 10 12 number yep um and the two toyotas chris bell i I think it's going to be interesting this week obviously (coughs) found speed last week has has up and down with road courses um, but I'm interested in Truex. He's been really fast. He's obviously been dominant. He's finding ways to win at different kinds of tracks. But 25, that feels interesting. Yeah, I just don't know, like, their qualifying speed on on these tracks. Yeah. I just think, you know, and we talked about it, like, he was so bad at speedways in 22. But it seems like in 2023, oh, yeah, no. he's been a lot more competitive. And that's just like kind of been his thing going across the board. So I think he is somebody that's worthwhile. <clears throat> I know, you know, it's 2025. If you can get 25, 2 or 25, I think it's worthwhile. If it's 20 and you want to wait and see if he qualifies well, maybe you bet it at 17 or 15. I don't fault you. But I, I do think 
if I'm betting, you know, one of the two Toyotas in this range, I think I'm betting Truex. Oh, he, I think pre qualifying, I would I would much rather grab Truex, but I actually like Bell post qual in in the race because I don't think Bell will qualify as good as Truex, and I think his number will probably stay around the same, maybe even get longer. Yeah, I did look at some driver ratings for the last three. Chris Bell is like seventh, uh, right behind Denny and Chastain and Byron and Logano and Blaney and Elliott. So, like, he's that of the guys that are kind of in this range, he's definitely standing out as a value. Um, let's talk about kind of the rest of the board. Obviously, you know, it's, it's a super speedway esque. Uh, track so there is a lot of potential value um Bubba 25 Tyler Reddick 25 Ty Gibbs um and then we get into like Harvick and Sindrick and Almarola is there anybody as we kind of go down the betting board that you're looking at maybe not even betting but keeping on a short list to see how they do in practice and qualifying um, and potentially go back and make some decisions. I mean, I'm going to keep pounding the table for the 2311 guys, especially pre-qualifying. Um, I I know that they've kind of sucked and shat the bed when it comes to qualifying at at Atlanta. But I mean, who's been faster than Tyler Reddick of late? When you know you're on Saturdays, not necessarily on Sunday. He hasn't put no. together the. The no, results, he, but I mean, when you're talking about, you know, value, it's definitely there. And then for Bubba, like, everybody knows his prowess on super speedways. It, the one thing about him, though, again, like, he's, he's not been good at qualifying at Atlanta in particular, the new configuration. So I think the number might stay around the same for him. Yeah, so with Redick, he has finished 28th or worse in his last four starts despite starting in the top 10 all four times. Uh, three He's of been those... a qualifying machine this yeah, year. He, he qualified second in three of the last four. Obviously, two of them were, were road street <laughs> courses, so that helps. But And he's led laps in three of the four races. Yep. So he's been fast. He's been getting to the front, and then something's happened. His worst qual... – just to put that in perspective, his worst qualifying spot – since Las Vegas, where he started 34th, is 16th at Atlanta. When Toyota, when he was still kind of figuring his car out, and he wound up finishing fifth in that race. I like him. I'm. I think he's a sneaky, sneaky option of the like 20 something <coughs> to one. But we're just gonna get our hearts torn out again because it's. Yeah. If we want to go the Penske route, if we want to go the Ford route, I know he's been an absolute dumpster fire Absolutely all season not. long. I'm going to pound the table for the two again. <laughs> I'm so stupid, but I, 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 a guy, like he is a guy that goes, I have two courses that I can legitimately win on oh road courses, gosh. speedways. That's it. That's the Austin Cindric <laughs> 2023 model. And if he's not spending his whole time planning for Atlanta and Dega and the places where he can legitimately win, yeah. even Michigan. And I think the, you know, obviously DK has down to 22. That's stupid. But if you can get 28 or 30, I don't hate it. Because if he comes out, he gets some stuff from Logano and, and Blaney. He puts that thing in the top five, top 10. That number is adios. <sighs> I guess I mean, if, I if you're betting someone 25 or longer, who who is that? What? Oh, it's got to be Tyler Reddick. I okay. look, look. <clears throat> this is gonna sound stupid because Reddick does not have the the mo recent history in regards to finishing these types of races. But I mean, just in terms of equipment and what they've looked like for the majority of a race. Yeah. Tyler Reddick is hands over hands over feet, you know, the ceiling is the roof, amount distancing himself from an Austin Cindric on the track. 
without having rotor break or driving too hard into corners because he got shuffled back a little bit further. I, yeah, I would much rather hit Reddick, especially at this number. Yeah. Yeah, and we talked about it with Truex, right? Like, he, he was somebody that we didn't think was very good in 21. And then in 22, he started, oh, maybe he's got some stuff. Um, and then in 23, he's been a little more competitive. He's leading laps. He's doing stuff. So maybe Truex or maybe a Reddick can have a similar similar vibe. Um, the Toyota boys, I think there may be some value if you, if you really believe in one of them over another, when we talk manufacturer. Um, but I think there's, um, you know, they're all clumped together for a reason. Anybody else, as we go down the board, like I don't hate Alex Bowman as a 30 to one in the Hendrick. He's been pretty solid at these, um, Corey LaJoy 35, the just too, it's too short for him. Yeah, you're probably right. I mean, Austin I mean, he's got Dillon, two. Justin, I think he has two top fives. Remember, or... when Ju- remember when Justin Haley was thirty-five to one on a on a, on a super speedway? Oh gosh. Chase Briscoe won, but that would require SHR to not have a absolute flaming dumpster going down the road. So, um, Cole Custer, baby, we got some Cole Custer season going. Yeah, I think he's, he's driving the 51, I believe, for Rick uh, Ware. He's, he's got the Rick Ware car. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, no. I have so zero, zero interest in that. Yeah, none. Okay, um, oh, okay. Here's, here's, here's a <clears throat> shout out here. Further down the list. If you're really looking at throwing a dart, somebody that I talked about pretty heavily during the Daytona 500 who probably wound up being absolutely terrible, but that's in line with SHR, Ryan Priest, 60 to 1. Prior, prior to him leaving... The Cup Series, he was kind of somebody that a lot of people liked at Super Speedways. I loved him at Daytona and Talladega races. Um, you know, if we're if we're thinking the Fords are going to somehow find that qualifying speed that they did early in the season, I, again, value pick, like throw a tenth of a unit on this, and you're you, you know you're profiting six units, and it's basically a pe- pennies upon dollar type of type of earnings here. If we're going to go the SHR route, I think I'd rather go Briscoe at 50 than Priest at 60, but I like where your head's at. Dude, Briscoe has been... SHR has the, been. Not even the, the the dumpster on fire floating through the, the river. It's been, it's been worse than that. He's been bad. <laughs> so true. So true. Remember when we bet him to win the cup final? That's so stupid. Oh, why so do you stupid. remind me? Just we, okay. We talk ourselves in these dumb, dumb bets. Chase Briscoe's last five total speed rankings from our buddy uh, Ryan over at iFantasy Race: thirty third, thirty fifth, thirty first, thirty first, nineteenth. Yeah, no, you're right. He's he, he's literally he's like starts and like sinks like a rock. Oh, I don't know wait. what's happening. Except for the week where I bet him to do bad because he broke his wrist or whatever at the dirt course, and all of a sudden he's yeah, and he kicked it. ass. Stupid, so stupid. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's go over and look at some uh, top ten, top fives, that kind of stuff. See if there isn't any value there. Uh, we'll start in the top ten market, as the top ten market is actually kind of fun this week because we're at a quote unquote super speedway. The books give us better numbers. You can find value. You can get Kyle Larson and Kyle Bush at plus money. You can get Marty Party at plus 145, Truex at 160. Uh, you can get Bowman at 175. I guess, you know, of the guys in the kind of top 10 range, is there a name or two that you're like, ooh, that is really nice value? Well, I mean, Tyler Reddick plus 160. I, I'll bang the table for that. I don't think I'm going to add that yet just because – I'm I'm really trying to stick true to my word and get be a little cautious here, but um, it's again like if he's if he's fast, he did this at Charlotte where he qualified fifteenth, and then he was probably the best, if not the second best car all day there. Um, you know, you're you're yeah. sitting pretty for the majority of the race with that number. And it's also I don't know it's it's a it's a different animal like at road courses especially. If your guy is in the conversation, especially at the end, there's a good chance that even if they don't win, you're going to be able to cash that top five, top 10 number. So like 
but at a Dega, it, it could be, you know, they could get first, they could get last, they could get a million places in between. Thing I will say is if you are liking some of the longer shots, a 20 to 1, 25 to 1, 30 to 1, supplementing is probably the move, especially if you think they can yeah. qualify decently well. It's like Ross Chastain's on my list to target Chris Bell. Um, Truex at 145. I like Reddick at 160. Obviously, shop it. See if you can't find better numbers. Uh, we'll see what we can find. I think uh, GM sometimes has better numbers, but it really is a, a interesting route. Uh, plus 350 for Truex as, as we look at the top five market. I almost wonder with some of these guys where it's like you're either going to win or, or be near the front or they're going to be kind of, you know, wrecking or whatever. I'd rather get a little riskier this week with some guys like a Chastain, like a Byron. Byron was a top five machine until I needed him to top five or top ten. <laughs> and then he gets like sixth or eleventh. So that's that's really fun. But plus 275 to top five is really interesting. Uh, even Logano and Blaney, who are just such rock stars at this track, plus 245 to top five was really fun. Uh, Cindric plus 450 to top five. I almost I mean, like if that. you like him, that's a that's a good number. That's kind of what I'm saying. Like, I'd almost rather like I and I'm going to add that um, mostly because I'm a glutton for punishment. Um, but if you like if you like somebody and you're like, you know what? I really like them, but. I don't know that I necessarily love the outright price. Top yeah. five, top three. That could make some sense. So at the Barstool Sportsbook, he is plus four. Where I just blew it. Plus 450. All right. I was going to say, so honestly, for me, I I feel like a guy like AJ Allmendinger could, could make some sense this week in terms of like a top 10 bet because yeah. I know – a little bit over two to one, but he's somebody that I'm waiting on because he doesn't. The colleague cars, just in terms of overall speed by himself, do not have the same type of speed that uh, the majority of the field is going to have. So he's not going to qualify that great. So you're yeah. probably going to get the same, if not maybe a slightly longer number. What about the guy right after him, Michael McDowell? Plus two ten to top five, top ten, plus five seventy five to top five. I don't think he can win, but we've seen him just be a better driver in general. He's, he's had his moments at different kinds of tracks. Feels like a decent, like he feels like he's priced maybe a tier below where he really should be. Yeah. And I mean, if, if we're expecting, again, this goes back to the qualifying efforts. If Ford is going to bring the speed off the haulers that they have, especially at Atlanta, he's yeah. qualified 12th in each of the last two Atlanta runs. And if he does that again, these numbers are definitely shortening. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna now. Take, I'm gonna now the likelihood of those cashing still. I, you know, you're you're still in a crapshoot type race. Oh, for sure. That's maybe why you go with a top five or top three because if it works out, it might really work out. And if you have a top ten, he gets third. You're gonna be kind of annoyed. I mean, obviously, you'd be happy because you cashed your bet, but yeah, um, something to think about. Uh, top three might be good supplemental, especially if you're betting near the top of the board, but always something to think about. Truex five to one, Busher six fifty, Reddick seven fifty. Those are some baby. nice numbers. Reddick at seven fifty to top three is kind of nice. Okay, but on that note, let me let me I'm gonna look at Caesars real quick and look at what top two. Toyota. Please do. Okay. Yeah, because I think manufacturer is an interesting. Let's just jump over there and look what, and we'll do some comparing because I think there is a lot of potential. Um, I will say Ford at plus one sixty feels nice, especially with the guys that we're excited about. Um, Anna's not as the favorite, but <coughs> I will say though, I. I still think there's value on betting Toyota. I know that they haven't won a super speedway race in quite some time, but I feel like they've been the best manufacturer as a whole over the past few weeks. I know Trackhouse has won two in a row, but yeah. Toyota has been really strong, especially, you know, unloading and with that just pure speed. Yeah, no, I agree. 
Uh, Cindric is top four at ten to one is almost bet. I'm gonna actually do that. Oh my gosh! Because I just like no, you're right. Top five is better. Plus four fifty. Uh, but ten to one, like he obviously has to be up there. But uh, I think Blaney and Logano are interesting. All right. But I think he's clearly in that next tier with whoever. You already know exactly what's going to happen here. You're going to be sitting on a uh, Austin Cindric top five. He's going to be running third, looking to make the pass for the win coming out of, of turn four wreck with Brad Keselowski. And then they're going to get passed by four cars. So neither of them hit inside the top five and some schmuck Ford Harrison Burton for you know Here, for God here's me. here's what will happen if i put austin cinder top forward on the board he'll wreck like you said or he'll get past the end and he'll be the second forward <laughs> and if i bet him top five he'll be the top forward but he'll be sixth overall yep i just if if i mean if we're really like let's link this through because like if, if we're putting if we're making a cinder the top forward and he's not top five He's behind, let's say he's behind three of the Hendra guys, probably yeah. Elliot, Harvick, and, or Elliot, um, uh, Larson, and Byron. Say he's behind those three. Maybe a track house. We'll put, put Chastain. Who would be the fifth guy that could be in front of him that's not a Ford? Maybe a Toyota, maybe a Denny or Bell, a Truex. Hamlin, Bell. Truex, Reddick. Yeah. yeah. All right, so top Chevy, obviously a lot of names to deal with, and a course that provides a lot of craziness. But Chastain. okay, I found your bet. If you wanna, if you wanna get exposure to Austin Cindric and just get a little wild for a small unit, love it. Eighteen to one to qualify on pole. If you think Fords are gonna bring the speed that they have, you're not having the hope eight finishes before anybody or anything like that. You could do like a fifth of a unit. Where is that? So that's at Caesars. I'm in. I think it's a fun way too, because like if you're betting a longer shot and you think, okay, they have a big number now, but they're gonna qualify well and they're gonna that number is gonna go away. Yep. Betting them to win the poll is a is a fun bet. It also gives you a little excitement, even if you only put like ten bucks on it. Exactly. Um, even five bucks. Just for, just for for sweat equity, and then you have them, and all of a sudden your outright ticket looks great, and you, you know, you could cover a weekend with a pole bet. You and he's qualified could. top five each of the last two here. Yeah, Brian, so I mean, if, if we're facts. expecting Ford to unload the way that they have at this particular track, I think that's a great way to get exposure to him. I agree. Uh, from a top Chevy standpoint, it really feels like one of these top five guys is probably your winner, right? Yeah, like, it, it's could, gonna could take have, a lot for them. Yeah, one of these other guys there. could, but they're probably winning the race if that's the case. <laughs> and so I don't know. Okay, look, why is JJ Yaley back in a car at a super speedway when he's a former F1 champion? Why was he not racing last week at the Chicago Street Race? I still don't understand this. You're gonna pound this joke into the ground, are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's to say? Michael McDowell, 13 to 1, top Ford. Hey, I don't hate that. I don't. We'll but see. Yeah. We'll see post qualifying. I'm I might come back to this market and hit hit uh Ryan Priest. Yeah, that could be fun too. But uh yeah, I mean I like I think Blaney and Logano are like here, but I think the next tier is really a big mush of like eight guys. I don't know that yeah. anybody really separates. Like I like RFK a lot. Um, but I'd much rather bet Bush at eight fifty than Brad at five. You know, there's gonna be a lot of Brad hype this yeah. week. I don't I don't see it. Uh top Toyota, Bell, Wallace, Gibbs. I almost feel like you Reddick. just you just bet Bubba, Gibbs, Reddick, and Truex. Yeah. I'd rather just yeah, or I even just I'd rather just bet the plus five fifty guys and call it a day. But yeah, or just bet Toyota plus two eighty five. Then you they you, they can finish like six down here. Um, head to heads. Yeah, I I don't know if I'm gonna get much exposure on these things. There was one I really want to get, so let's see if they have it still. Um, 
Oh, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. Alex Bowman plus money over Brad Keselowski. Woo, baby. If we work, if we work under the the idea that your that Brad K is going to spin out Cindric and Alex Bowman is going to go right by him. We get like ninth and he's going to get me that plus 115, baby. That is sweet, sweet EV. Uh, that's at Barstool. Um, and then, let's see. There was one. So, Harvick at plus 110 over Bell. Logano and Byron. Elliot and Blaney. I, can, I mean, don't hate that. Um, oh, there it is. Logano over Blaney. That's going on there. Oh, baby. We're back to our old ways. Ross over Kyle Busch. Oh, to do some digging. Maybe if we go over here, go to scheduled is where the head to heads are. Yeah. Yeah. Chase and Kyle Bush, Austin Sindrick and Eric Jones. Um, I don't hate Eric Jones here, honestly. Minus 105. Um, oh my God. It's Team Hendrick versus. The Brad K Mobile. I feel like Brian <laughs> this week. Uh, you're giving me plus money to take Byron over Keslowski. Um, I I love you, Brad. It's been a fun run with you, dude. But that's just dumb city. Uh, let's see. That's at Caesars, and that is plus one hundred. Welcome to the card. Fade Keslowski week is upon us. I didn't even know it was going to be here, and all of a sudden, here it is. You uh, know, all that means is that everybody should absolutely be hammering any Keslowski to win the race. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> um, Hill versus Custer. I kind of like Cole Custer there. Uh, Busher versus Bell. I don't know, man. Austin Hill is good. No, he is. He loves these super speedway type races. Oh, he sure does. So does Cole Custer, our guy Cole. He's been in money. Um, Tharshi blows Ross Chastain over Kyle Larson. I talked about the Larson struggles. Maybe I'm an idiot for stepping on in the way of Larson bounce back season, but. I don't trust him this week. I think he gets like 15th, 18th, 20th, 4th. Um, and I think that's a good bet. I'm kind of scared for you. I appreciate that. <laughs> wait, wait till you see the end of the show. Um, oh, no. There you go. Ryan Priest over Del Gregson, minus 120. That feels like a nice bet if you like Ryan Priest. I do. I do like that. Even if it I don't know. Little, I can't. Little, I can't bet matchups with guys at the back just because, like, there's too much that can go wrong with them. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, any? Oh, let's look at qualifiers to see if there's any other potential value. So, of the guys we like that legitimately can win, I, I think you know these are fine, but they're not as fun. Um, Chastain at ten, Kozlowski at twelve. Byron at 14. Um, this is this fastest qualifier? Yeah. Reddick at 20. Truex at 20. Recky Spinouts at 25. No. Eric Jones at 30. No. McDowell, 40. So that- that's funny you say that. I was Dr. actually Haley at 50. I was peeking at that. McDowell at 40 is interesting. I really feel like you have to have the car, though. And I don't know if he has the car. He might be able to muscle it around. Yeah. The... But. I'm looking at qualifying numbers <sighs> right now. And, yeah, Ford, Ford snagged the first eight spots at Atlanta when it was yeah. when it was chilly. Yeah. Yeah, and now it's going to be like clam chowder or something, right? Mixing it up. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, you know, I I am going to add a qualifier bet. Uh, nope, I can't do it. It's too short. 
I was going to say, I feel like Christopher Bell is a pretty good, that, especially that far down the board. He's He started all, all the races. ones fine. I think you should do it. He started all three super speedway races inside the top 10. Um, he looked good at uh, Daytona and Talladega. He was the only Toyota in the top 10 at Atlanta. Yeah, look at Almarola up here. He'll never be up here again. Yeah, that's ridiculous. I have. Yeah, I think, I think Byron and Chastain are the other two names besides Cindric that I'm interested in. But yeah, I think I'm gonna sit that out. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get that. <sighs> All right, Brian. We've been going for an hour. Should we just review what we have? Give the people our favorite bet at this point and get out of here before we. Yeah, I think that's too much of the good. card. All right, let me do this, and then. I'm just gonna minimize my sanity. So I have one outright. We'll see if I add a second one. If I do, I'll tweet it out. the The options are like one of like Truex or Redick. Maybe maybe someone in the twenties. Uh, but I have I have I have Ross at sixteen. I like that a lot. Uh, I have Cindric to top five plus four fifty. Also on the poll at eighteen to one. Uh, McDowell the top ten at plus two ten. I feel like I think that's good. Uh, Bowman over Keselowski and Byron over Keselowski because plus money over Keselowski. Thank you. Um, and my best bet is going to be the Ross Chastain over Kyle Larson. Um, and maybe I'll end up hating my life um, and be like, "Why are you so dumb? Why would you do that? Uh, you really are a glutton for punishment." But I love it, so I'm putting three units on it. <laughs> All right, I've my card is much more tidy. I'm actually peppering the outright board right now with a few numbers I feel like will get shorter uh, yep. post qualifying. Blaney at twelve, Busher at twenty two, and Reddick at twenty five, all for very small plays. And then I I'm gonna go with this right now. Oh, how did that get on there like that? That don't I would never bet that, folks. Uh, Blaney over Logano. I think it's a sign from the gods, Brian. <laughs> Blaney over Logano is oh. going to be my best bet. Um, I think they're 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 extremely close competitors at these track types. So I'm going to throw two units on that and hope it sticks. Yep, I like it. Um, obviously, different different ways to uh, peel the apple or whatever the saying is, but uh, fun to get back to it. Appreciate everybody as I struggle through this, but. Um, we will be back post qualifying uh, with lots of thoughts. Uh, Brian Vegas this weekend or home next weekend? I'm there next weekend. Okay, cool. I got Scott Fishbowl. It's oh, going to be so New excited. Hampshire race. So excited! It's going to be a great weekend. I'm very yeah. much looking forward to it. But if you enjoy what we're doing, if you make sure you hit the subscribe button, make sure you are uh, hit the no like notification if you enjoyed the episode. Let us know your favorite outright. Uh, as we sit here today, um, for you, it'll be a Thursday. That's Brian Twining. I'm Kyle Robert. Enjoy the rest of your week, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. <laughs>